I'm going to introduce you to the same type of material as is in Knight 16.4, but it's really, unfortunately, not going to be all that helpful for you to follow along in 16.4. So, in class, this is a top view. We had a thing that had 75 rods on it, and then each of those rods was connected by a small wire to the next rod. And if I shook one of these rods, that wire would twist a little bit and it would transmit the shaking to the next wire. So if you lifted this wire up quickly, then that wire would start to lift up. And because that one started to lift up, the one that was next to it would start to lift up. And because that one started to lift up, the one that was next to it started to lift, lift up. And there was this actually beautiful effect of a wave traveling down the length of this thing. There's a rod and a wire. Let's be really simple and just try to understand the rod and the wire. Okay, so here's like a ceiling. And here's a wire. And here's a rod. And I'm just going to imagine that if this rod twists a little bit, that that wire is going to fight the twist. Okay? So um, there's the thing hanging from the ceiling. Let's look at it from an end view, like from the bottom. So here's a picture of the same thing from the bottom. Now I'm looking up at the ceiling. On the far side of this rod is a wire. Now, if I were to twist the rod, that is to say, uh, if I were to go like that to that rod, well, then what would happen here in this bottom view is the rod would twist like this. And that wire would be fighting the twist. Okay, now we can give this angle here a name. We're going to call that angle theta. And because that wire is fighting the twist, and because it's going to fight it more and more if we twist it far and farther, we can say that that wire is exerting a torque. And the torque is going to be proportional to the amount that we've twisted the rod, because the amount that we've twisted the rod is the amount of twist in the wire. So it's going to be proportional to the amount that we've twisted the rod. We don't know the proportionality constant. We're going to call it kappa. And we know that opposes the torque opposes the direction of theta. So we put a minus sign in there. OK, well, now you know the formula for angular acceleration. If I say that's the torque, but I also have this other formula, which is always true, which is torque is equal to I alpha for a rigid body, then I can combine these two equations. Okay, So this equation is one of our general formula. This one is based on our assumption of how the torque of this little wire that connects to the rod uh, behaves. We're going to combine those two equations, and we get that I alpha is equal to minus kappa theta. OK, and now let's do a couple other things. Let's bring the kappa theta to the other side of the equation. So now it's I alpha plus kappa theta equals 0. And then let's use the fact that we know that alpha is d squared theta dt squared. And so we now have a differential equation. The differential equation is that uh, i times d squared theta dt squared plus kappa theta is equal to 0. Now, it doesn't really matter what i is here. But of course, you know for a, a rod that's got length l and mass m that the formula for i is equal to 1 12th l squared m if it's spinning around the middle. So you could put that in. I don't think that's really going to help me that much to put the fact that i is 1 12th l squared m in there for i, but you would know what to do. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. And so you also recognize this equation. This equation is exactly the same equation as you had for the harmonic oscillator, or for the pendulum. Uh, for the har harmonic oscillator, uh, we, the formula was m d squared x dt squared plus kx is equal to 0. For the pendulum, it was that. 
but then we made this approximation that the pendulum could be a, a small angle pendulum. So we did sine theta is approximately theta. So that was our equation for a pendulum of on a string of length L in a gravitational acceleration G. Now, you've got experience with these two equations. And this equation here, except for the fact that where I see I, on this one I see M, and on this one I see L, where I see kappa here, on this one I see K, and on this one I see G, and where I see theta here, well, for the pendulum it was indeed theta, an angle, but for the harmonic oscillator it was X. At this point, you know the solution to these kind of equations. The solution is theta of t is equal to some thing which we call the amplitude times cos of omega t plus some thing that we call the phase. And omega in this case, to make this thing actually satisfy the differential equation, is uh, the square root of kappa over i. Okay. So this is a solved problem. Let's go on to a more complicated one. Trust me, I'm building you up to the 75 rod case. We've started with one rod. Let's go on to two rods. So now we have two rods and one, two, three wires. I'll call this rod one like that. And I'll call this rod two like that. And I'll call this W1, W2, and W3. And to make our lives easy, let's have the, uh, the length and the mass of this rod be the same as the length and the mass of that rod. Or if we want to write it in terms of I, the moment of inertia, I of each of these two rods is the same. And let's have the amount that these wires that connect the rods to the walls and to each other Let's have those all be identical wires, okay? Just to keep our lives easy, okay? So what is, if this, if this rod twists by an amount theta one and this rod twists by an amount theta two, how much twist is in this wire? Well, one end of this wire is connected to the wall. The other end of this wire is connected to the rod that's been twisted by theta one. So there's theta one of twist in wire one. This one in the middle is a little bit more complicated. If this rod twists by theta one, but this one also twists by an amount theta two, which happens to be the same as theta one, then there's no twist in this wire. Because both if both of these twist to together, then they're not twisting this wire. So the, actually, the interesting thing here is the amount of twist in this wire is theta one minus theta two. Go, oh, is it theta one minus theta two or is it theta two minus theta one? Let's worry about the signs in just a second. The amount of twist, whether it's positive or negative, for this center wire is theta one minus theta two because if both rods twist together, then there's no twist in the wire, okay? Now we're really in position to write down what uh, tau equals I alpha has to say for both of these. So we have the torque on rod one is equal to the moment of inertia of rod one times the angular acceleration of rod one. And we have the torque on rod two equals the moment of inertia of rod two, which we're assuming is the same, times the uh, angular acceleration of rod two. Now the torque on rod one is, well, there's a torque due to that wire. And that's equal to minus kappa theta one. But there's also a torque due to that wire. And if only this thing twisted and this thing didn't twist at all, then that would all be another minus kappa theta one. Because if this thing didn't twist at all, but this thing did twist, both of these wires would be opposing the twist. So we have minus kappa theta one, minus kappa theta one, if this one doesn't twist along with this one. But if this one does start twisting along with this one, the amount of twist in this wire is reduced. So it's minus kappa theta one, minus theta two. There, now I fixed the sign, okay? So if you were worried about whether this twist was theta one minus theta two or theta two minus theta one, that's where I fixed the sign right there. 
Okay, so now we know the torque on rod one. What's the torque on rod two? I'll squeeze that in down here. The torque on rod two, well, we have this wire here. That one's definitely giving us a minus kappa, now theta two. Okay, and if this rod didn't twist at all, if this rod didn't twist at all, but this one twisted by an amount theta two, then we have another minus kappa theta two. But if this rod starts to twist along with this rod, so this one goes by an amount theta two, and maybe this one, maybe this one goes by that same amount, in which case we, there'd be no net twist in this wire, but maybe this one kind of catches up some with that one, then it's gonna reduce the amount of twist in the connecting wire. And so for this one, it's minus kappa theta two minus theta one. Now, uh, if you look at that, the, the torque on rod two, right there, due to the connecting wire, is very interestingly equal and opposite to the torque on rod one due to the connecting wire. I've been pretty careful here. I'm positive that those are right. You probably wanna uh, think about it if you're not convinced. So now we have one, two, three, four equations, which we're gonna use. We're just gonna set the I alpha two equal to what this goop is here. And we're gonna set the I alpha one equal to what this goop is right here. So there, I did that work for you. And now just like when I had only one rod connected to a ceiling, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that by the definition of alpha one to rewrite this as I d squared theta one dt squared. And then I'm gonna use the definition of alpha two to write that as d squared theta two dt squared. And then I'm gonna take this goop that's over here on the right side of the equation, I'm gonna move it to the left-hand side of the equation, which changes the signs. So I did that for you. Now these are called coupled equations because the different derivative of theta one involves theta two. And the derivative of theta two, shoot, involves theta one. So you can't just go straight at the answer like you could before and say this is like one of the problems we've already solved before because these are sort of like one of the problems we've solved before except they're sort of two problems and they're intermingled. So the motion of these two wires is coupled. Now I'm gonna help you out here a little bit, but then we're gonna continue on this in class on Wednesday. So I'm gonna help you out by getting you started on how to solve these two coupled differential equations. And uh, one way to do it is to do one of our old guesses, okay? So, if you had those two rods, so uh, here's those two rods, and they're each connected to a wall, and they're connected to each other. So one possibility that you might go, oh gosh, I think I can see that that's a solution of the equations, is if they rock together. Because if they rock together, then there's no twist in the wire connecting them. No twist at all in the wire connecting them if they rock together. If they rock together, then they're each twisting against their, their respective wall the same amount. So each of them is experiencing the same sort of restoring amount of torque. So if they rock together, the walls are gonna be doing the same things to both of them, so they will keep rocking together. If one of these had a, like a thicker wire uh, connecting it to its wall, then uh, you would start to rock it, but then it would rock faster because its wire apply torque and restore its position more strongly. But if they're connected to the walls by the same thickness of little uh, wires, then uh, rocking together is a, quite the possibility. Now here's another possibility. They might rock in opposition. Whee, 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 whee. 
Now, if they rock in opposition, that center wire is getting twisted a lot, okay? Because the center wire has, it, it, it's, it's getting twisted by an amount, however much this one's twisted, plus however much this one's twisted, because they're twisting in opposite directions. So in, in this situation, instead of the center wire twisting not at all, the tw center wire is twisting double. But once again, for the wires that are connecting these things to the walls, they're twisting the same amount. So there's a certain symmetry in this situation. There's a certain symmetry in the, they're rocking perfectly together, and there's a certain symmetry in they're rocking uh, separately. So let's assume that there's a solution where they rock together, and that solution is gonna be theta one of t equals theta two of t equals a, cosine of omega t plus phi naught. And then we're going to have a, that's going to be a possible solution of these equations. You're going to stick it in into these equations and see whether it works, and if it works, what omega is. And we'll do that in class together on Wednesday. And then I'm going to say, for there's, that's one possible solution. Here's another possible solution. This is the one where they rock in opposition to each other. Theta 1 of t is equal to minus theta 2 of t. Okay. And those two things are going to be equal to some new constant b plus some new constant, new frequency, which I'll call uh, omega prime times t. And of course, we can have another phase, which we could call phi naught prime. Let's make your lives a little easier. You know how long these, how these phases go through the problem. They go through the problem in a rather uninteresting way. So let's just say there's no phase, in which case our first solution is theta 1 of t equals theta 2 of t equals a cos omega t. And our second solution is theta 1 of t is equal to minus theta 2 of t is equal to b cos omega prime of t. Now, uh, I want you guys to do some of the algebra and work. So that's where I'm going to leave this. If you want to get a head start on uh, tomorrow's class, you could go uh, find out what omega and omega prime are. Of course, that might leave you a little bored once everybody else is doing the work with you tomorrow. So uh, that's it. We're on our way to 75 rods.